Well, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this service of evening prayer on this beautiful Sunday evening. My name is David, and I'm the curate here at St. Matthew St. Luke uh, in Darlington, as well as at St. Michael's in, Dar in Highington. A very warm welcome to you if you're joining us for the first time today uh, on this Pentecost Sunday, which also is the Jubilee Sunday. So welcome to you and welcome to our prayer. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to have an e uh, a service of evening prayer uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. I'll, I'll minimize myself in a moment and have the, uh, the liturgy in the background. Um, but I just want to say, let's take a moment to quiet, take a moment to plant our feet, take a moment to close our eyes. Remember that it's God himself who has brought us here today to meet with him, to know his son, to be filled with his spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Shall we begin? Beloved, we're come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love, and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us sit or kneel in silence, and remember God's presence with us now. Together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So I invite you to say the Magnificat with me responsorially, if you would join with me on the even verses. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, and hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So being Pentecost, my friends, our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. 
Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enables them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our second reading, our gospel reading for today, is taken from John chapter 14, beginning at verse 8. This was uh, a speech, a prayer of Jesus, a time that Jesus had with his disciples just before he went to the cross. So sometime before uh, what we just read in Acts. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been with you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least, believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. and They will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. All this I have spoken while, you, while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. So, my friends, see if this works. Well, may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So these last days, we, the whole nation, and many Commonwealth nations around the world have been celebrating our Queen's 70-year reign, the Platinum Jubilee, the Platy Jubes. And as it happens, the anniversary today falls on the Sunday, when the Church celebrates one of her most incredible feasts, the Feast of Pentecost, 
commemorating the coming of the Holy Spirit and the first disciples and beginning the birth of the church. I read recently of the secret ceremony, part of the Queen's coronation ceremony considered so sacred that it was deemed to be improper to televise. In the ceremony, the Queen, adorned in a simple white dress, was anointed by the Archbishop with holy oil, quote, poured on her hands, her hands, her head, and her chest, to show that she had been set apart by God to serve and love her people with all of her actions, as in all of her heart, with all of her mind, and with all of her strength. strength. She was anointed with this holy oil as a sign by the church that speaks of God's blessing, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And the use of this oil is thought to be an actual occasion for the blessing of God's Holy Spirit. In biblical history, those who would be anointed in this way would be those set apart for a specific or special purpose, as if to serve God and his purposes and his people. They were the priests, the prophets, the kings of old. In fact, the very term Christ or Messiah in Hebrew literally means anointed one. In his baptism, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to be the priest, the prophet, the king supreme. Queen Elizabeth, so it is believed, was given authority not conferred by parliament nor inherited from her father, but coming from God himself. In her coronation, she was anointed with the Holy Spirit to participate in the authority of the supreme monarch the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. All right. So as I said before, this happens to all line up for us today on this Feast of Pentecost, when we remember when in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, the Spirit of God was poured out for all peoples to receive, not just for the kings and queens, prophets and priests, but for all of God's people to know his life and be moved and inspired by him to participate in his special purposes for the world. The Greek word pneuma, translated as spirit in the New Testament, literally means a current of air, such as a, a wind or a breath. The same idea is there in the Hebrew Old Testament, in the beginning. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the spirit of God, the ruach, the wind of God, hovered over the waters. Jesus promises that just as God breathed life into the body of Adam, so he breathes his Holy Spirit into those who receive his Son, Jesus Christ, and believe in him. Just as the human body, without breath, is physically dead, so those who do not have the Holy Spirit are spiritually dead. But as St. Paul says, those who are born again are given new life, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. On that first Pentecost 2,000 years ago, the Counselor, the Spirit of Truth, was poured out upon Jesus' followers for the first time, while that same Spirit is still poured into the hearts of his followers down to this day. You can't always see the Holy Spirit working in your life, just like you can't always see the wind blowing. But just as you can step outside and feel the effects of an invigorating breeze, you can get in step with the Spirit and, exp and experience his rejuvenating power. Life in Christ is not just some hope of life after death, but eternal life today. To receive his life in us, the life of heaven here today. If you're feeling weary in your faith walk, too tired to take another step, let him refresh you. If you're running the good race but feeling out of breath, let him be your spiritual oxygen. Back in Canada, I worked as a painter decorator. It's very boring work. Lots of time to think and lots of time to pray. But also, from time to time, I'd listen to an audiobook. There with my headphones, you might see me where uh, I'd be up on scaffolding or I'd be, I'd be uh, a painting there in the mud um, uh, with these things on. And at one point, I was listening to a book called uh, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. And you might have seen me there uh, weeping as I was listening to this. But there was a character at the beginning of the story that I found to be really interesting. He was known as Monseigneur Bienvenu, and he was the good bishop of Digne. He was a good man who lived out his priestly vocation and lo with love and gentleness and all humil humility. And he was a true servant of God and of those who were in his charge. And as the author describes him, he had a strange and peculiar way of judging things. I suspect he acquired it from the gospel. Well, this character was once called to Paris for a big church meeting called a synod. 
And being the bishop of a mountainous diocese in France, living so near to nature, in rusticity and privation, as the book says, he seemed to bring among those eminent personages ideas that changed the temperature of the synod. He returned very soon to Digne. When asked about his sudden return, he answered, I annoyed them. The free air went, with, went in with me. I had the, the effect of an open door. Now, I don't know what it means about the current state of the church, or at least my view of the church, that I need to find such inspiration from a fictional character like this bishop. But I think that his way of life and love as an example to all of us is a beautiful model of what it might mean to follow Jesus Christ. My suggestion is this. In this world we are living in, ever polarizing, seeming to go off the rails, perhaps we need some of that free mountain air of the gospel. This is the remedy the world needs right now. In whatever way we're living our lives, now is the time we could do with that fresh wind of God. Perhaps we need that door to be left open, that door of our own lives, that the free air of God's spirit, that fresh wind might come in and upset things, to blow into our hearts. Whether for the first time or afresh, come Holy Spirit. May we be reminded then, and turn to, of all that Jesus has said and done, of the salvation that he has won for us. May we be reminded that the church has been set apart by God to serve and love his people in all of our actions, with our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strength. And may we be reminded that the gift of his life is open to all who receive him, that he, the author of life, unites himself to us and dwells in our hearts. Spirit of God, the helper, the counselor, living water, fresh wind, Come, Holy Spirit, and anoint us with the oil of your blessing. So happy pa Pentecost, everyone. Continue to enjoy the day's celebrations. God bless you all, and God bless the Queen. Let's see. So I invite you to respond. We'll say the Nunc Dubinis together, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which you hast prepared before the face of all peoples, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we say now, and affirm our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the collect set for today, this day of Pentecost. God, who at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people, by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit have a right judgment in all things, 
and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the whole same Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Now a collect for Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth. Gracious God, we give thanks for the reign of your servant Elizabeth our Queen, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A coronation Prayer O Lord, the way, the truth, and the life, we give you thanks for your servant Elizabeth, our Queen. May she ever be provided with all that she may need for her ministry among us. Strengthen, strengthen to meet every demand which her office may make. And in all things nourished by your word and example, who with the Father and the Son live and reign world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both by our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy holy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So keep a moment or two of silence as we bring before God anybody or anything that we would like to pray for at this time. Continue to pray for the people in Ukraine. It's the conflict there. We pray for your peace, O Lord, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that reconciles, the peace that heals, the peace that builds up to come. Have mercy upon us all, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, we pray for those who are sick those who are ill, those who are dying at this time. Lord God, that you would be a comfort to them. We ask for your spirit of healing, your spirit of comfort, your holy presence to be with them at this time. Meet us in our struggles, I pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, sick. We pray for those who have recently died and for the families and friends of those left behind. Lord, you walk with us on the darkest path. Lighten the steps before us. Be the light in the darkness to us. We ask for your comfort. Pray for those who mourn, O Lord, that they would be re reunited with their loved ones in the kingdom of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we thank you for your church, for your life-giving spirit, for the victory that you have won for us on the cross. By your death and resurrection, you raise us to new life. Fill our hearts, O Lord, the hearts of all of your disciples, that we would know afresh the love that you have for us and for the world. Send us out, O Lord, in the power of your Spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, my friends, we come near the end of our prayers for tonight. I invite you to say the grace with me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, God bless you on the rest of this evening. May he bless you in your dreams. May he bless you in your sleep. May he bless you as you wake in the morning. God bless you all. Take care.